Hi, I'm Brett, and this summer I worked on transformation optics and metamaterials in Professor Gerbic's group. Uh, so what is transformation optics? It's the study of controlling electromagnetic waves and the geometry of light through spatial transformation. So uh, here's an example. You take this half circle, you distort it into a rectangle, and the result is circular waves are converted to planar waves. Uh, so Maxwell's equations remain in the same form after a coordinate transformation if the material parameters are changed. So this rectangle here is a different material than the half circle. And it's actually a metamaterial. Metamaterials are materials engineered to have certain epsilon and mu, or permittivity and permeability. Uh, so what can you do with transformation optics? One of the most famous examples is invisibility. Uh, the idea is that if you can bend light around an object such that the object does not affect the light, then it would be invisible. Uh, another application is a uh, collimator. Collimator takes circular waves and converts them to planar waves. Uh, this can be used for antennas, for instance. A dish antenna does the same thing. This would be, instead of being a dish, this would be a planar structure. Also, you could have a rotator. A rotator uh, basically makes an object, an object look rotated. So what I work on? Uh, I worked on trying to realize these materials. So for a general transformation, these materials have tensor parameters. That means that if you look in one direction, permeability might be 5. If you look in another direction, it might be 7. So you know all the information about all the directions from this tensor. The first step I took was I broke up this tensor into its constituent eigenvectors and eigenvalues. Here on the right, I did this for a collimator. You can see the eigenvalue contours as well as the eigenvector fields. The next step I take is I draw continuous traces through the eigenvector fields, and then I overlay them on top of each other. Whenever you draw a continuous trace through a vector field, you're basically just solving a differential equation, and that's what I did. So the idea is that I load these eigenvector continuous traces with eigenvalues. And what does it mean to load with a permeability of 4, for instance? Well, it turns out that permeability is the same as per unit inductance. And permittivity is the same as per unit capacitance. It can be shown from comparing the dispersion relationships of transmission lines and anisotropic medium that this is true. But I will not go into too much detail because I did not work on this. The next step I take is I make a circuit network through these eigenvectors based on the eigenvalues. So what I did was I built this circuit network in a circuit solving program and there was like 10,000 capacitors and inductors. I actually wrote a program to build it. Then I excite it with a point source and export these node voltages to MATLAB. And you can see here that the circuit network, I like take all the lines and I flatten them out so it's like horizontal and vertical lines. So then I have to convert these node voltages back into the old coordinate system. And on the bottom right, you can see that the wave does collimate into a plane wave, as expected. So I'm still working on this because it's not practical to have 10,000 inductors and capacitors. But it is practical to have continuous traces on a printed circuit board. So here on the right, you can see the structure I have. I vary the amplitude y and amplitude x and I get this blue parallelogram here, all the different index combinations from the structure. The idea is that if the red blob represents the index combinations I need to build this transformation optics design, then I would be able to build it. So I'd like to thank Professor Gerbic, Gherkin, Carl, and the SHURE program.